These are the dinosaurs of jet-powered aircraft. It wasn't ice that drove them to extinction, it was OPEC. So here they rest in the Mojave sun, the fast and thirsty airplanes of the 50s and 60s. In August of 1986, on a runway next to these modern fossils, a new era in jet aviation began. A research Boeing 727 took off from here, equipped with a test engine built by General Electric that looked like it had lost its cowling. What it was, however, was an advanced technology demonstrator engine called UDF, or unducted fan. Known generically as ultra-high bypass propulsion, or UHB, this technology may offer 25 to 45 percent improvements in fuel efficiency over existing jet engines. Two teams of engine manufacturers and one airplane manufacturer are working to produce UHB-powered airplanes for delivery in the 1990s. Well, McDonnell Douglas is in a unique position in the 100 to 150 passenger airplane category because we have a proven airframe, the MD-80, which is well suited to the incorporation of either prop fan or unducted fan technology because of its installation of the engines being on the aft fuselage. Each engine builder has taken a different approach to the ultra-high bypass concept. Pratt & Whitney and the Allison Division of General Motors are building what they call the prop fan. The prop fan differs from GE's unducted fan in two respects. First, a sophisticated transmission is used to channel power from the turbines to the propulsors, the whirling blades that push air around the engine to produce thrust. This gearing is intended to maximize UHB's efficiency, but a transmission also adds weight and mechanical complexity. General Electric's UDF, on the other hand, has no transmission, so it is lighter, less complex, and it has already flown 93 test flights and 165 hours on the McDonnell Douglas UHB demonstrator alone. The UDF has no gearbox. It's a counter-rotating turbine that extracts the power off the, the exhaust of the uh, core engine and transmits it directly to the blades without a gearbox. Uh, a lot more efficient in the higher horsepower ranges to do that without a gearbox. The gearbox adds a lot of weight, complexity, and it takes a lot of horsepower to operate the gearbox. Ultra-high bypass engines still face technical and economic risks. Reliability, maintenance costs, and purchase price, as well as ride quality, are still unknowns. The startup costs of designing the UHB engine airplane system and retrofitting existing aircraft will be high. Coupled with the relative stability of fuel prices, these factors are sure to affect UHB's appeal to domestic air carriers. Fuel is now hovering around 50 cents a gallon. Uh, not that long ago it was a dollar a gallon, and I think that difference right there uh, can make the uh, UDF attractive or not attractive. New generations of transports have had to have roughly a 10 percent improvement in operating uh, costs before they're really embraced by the industry. And at this point, I don't think the UDF uh, has that. Improving fuel efficiency is the reason for ultra-high bypass engines, and their immediate future is sure to be tied to the price of jet fuel. The bottom line is, with the efficiencies offered by these engines and the tensions besetting the oil industry, the question is not if, but when they will arrive. Craig Schmidtman, Aerospace Defense News, Mojave.